Please let this deck be good. Please let this deck be good. I need more Hollow Vine in my life. Hello, folks. Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben, you here for another modern video. Um, the last one actually had good viewership, so we're going to try this again. And today we're going to be playing with Caden's Modern Hollow Vine deck list. So for those of you who have been following my content for maybe a year or more, you probably were around for that period where I just played the ever-loving crap out of the Legacy Madness deck. And we are going to try to port that deck into Modern today. Our general goal is to play multiple Venge Vines from the graveyard, because when you cast a spell, if it's a second creature spell you cast, you can return Venge Vines from the graveyard to the battlefield. So we're going to play some discard spells, and then discard some madness creatures that we can play for free, or some creatures like Hollow Ones, and then play, or well, rather get back Venge Vines from the graveyard for free. And if you can dump a couple of Venge Vines and Hollow Ones into play, that is a lot of power quickly. Um, Shardless Agent into a pair of 4-4 four, four Rhinos is going to kind of do a similar sort of thing where you are kind of creating multiple bodies that go wide of single target removal relatively easily. And we'll also be playing this card alongside it so that we can have some additional discard synergies. And this is a way to search up the Underworld Cookbook, which can be a way to get our Venge Vines into the graveyard in the first place or allow us to cast our Madness creatures for free. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the full deck list here. Now today's video is sponsored by Eminence Gaming, Moxfield.com, and Cool Stuff Inc. Remember, if you need paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Order. And if you aren't already following Eminence Gaming, please consider checking them out. They are really helping the CEDH scene grow, and I'm really excited about their upcoming tournament series. So this is the deck list in all of its glory. Now, there is going to be some variance and randomness within this deck list because we are going to be playing Burning Inquiry, and we're also going to be playing Street Wraith. So Street Wraith tends to complicate mulligans because you don't know whether Street Wraith is a land or a spell. You don't know if it's a creature or something that can cause you to discard. So it's not like this card is just free. In addition to the cost of two life, it does make mulligans a little bit harder. Now that said, the upside of what we're doing is a bunch of hasty 4-3 creatures. And we are going to have multiple different discard outlets here, some of them attached to creatures, while others are attached to spells. Sideboard here feels pretty smooth, it feels relatively targeted. And something that I said in my last Modern video is that the card base of Modern has changed so that really minus the lands, most of the spells that you're playing in Modern at this point are just legacy power level. And I think I've played every card in this deck list in Legacy with the exception of Cathartic Reunion. So just food for thought, like... If you enjoy Legacy and you enjoy that really high power gaming, there might be some appeal to current modern for you. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the matches and see how this deck feels. Let's battle. All right. So our first hand has a copy of Burning Inquiry and the ability to cast a Hollow One on turn one, assuming that we do not actually discard the Hollow One itself. Uh, we may awkwardly end up fueling my opponent's graveyard for things like Dragon Rage Channeler and Merktide Regent, though, so that's a thing. And I have no heuristics for playing this deck. I've never played with or against this in Modern, so we'll kind of be figuring out everything live. For example, I don't know if I have reasons to do this first. I'm pretty sure I'm just supposed to play Burning Inquiry Hollow One here, or at least attempt to. It never fails. It never fails. All right. Let's cycle this. All our cards are in the wrong zone. <laughs> we grew my opponent's creature. Although I did make them discard a Merktide Regent, so I guess there's that. Um, yeah. We'll see how this goes, but like now my opponent just has counter spells available. 
So I guess I'm playing this and then getting a tapped land out of the way. Sure. Let's get a Blood Crypt out of the way and pass the turn. I now have Venge Vines in my hand that I cannot currently cast. We'll hope to get that out of the way with this. EI reveals subtlety. This is a this turn, so we don't have to worry about it coming back. Uh, what are my green mana sources? Never mind. Okay. So I can go ahead and play this seasoned pyromancer. I can put these into the graveyard, but I'm not good at casting two creatures in a single turn right now. I think I need to get these into the graveyard while the shields are down from counter spells, though. All right, bam, bam. Okay. Oh, man. This is as an additional cost to cast it, discard two cards. That doesn't happen on resolution. I'm going to get absolutely fucking savaged by a spell pierce. Holy fuck. Okay. Sure. All right. I'll take three. I'm basically dead next turn. I think I have to play a land to play around Spell Pierce. So we'll make a land drop. Cast this. Discard two of these. Uh. Well, this is awkward. I guess I'm going deeper in hopes of doing something. I'm already dead to Lightning Bolt, so it's not like this changes things. I don't have a red card to pitch to do this. Uh, yeah, I think we did nothing this game. I think this is a case where we took a bunch of game actions that didn't actually result in me doing anything of an appropriate power level. And I don't think I could just kill my opponent from 18 in one turn. Like, that would require four Venge Vines to happen. All right. Sure. I eat six in the air. Not immediately dead to Lightning Bolt, but I am dead to these on the backswing. I can't cast two spells. We're donezo. So my opponent does care about their graveyard. And this is where I don't have matchup experience. This can answer the small creatures, like the Ragavans and Dragon Rage Channelers, but not the big stuff like Murktide Regent. And similarly, this does nothing against something like Ragavan, but is going to be great versus Murktide Regent. I might need Leyline since I am milling my opponent. But I've effectively still played zero games with this deck because I didn't really do anything that game, so I just don't have a feel for how this deck functions yet and what I can and can't take out. But I'm going to opt not to sideboard while I learn what this deck is capable of. All right, am I supposed to keep a naked Burning Inquiry hand with Orcish Bowmasters and just play Burning Inquiry on turn three? Feels weird. Might be correct, though. Let's try it. A good amount of time, the Orcish Bowmasters is just a really strong turn to play because my opponent will lead on a red creature with one toughness and then I just get to take it out. All right, sure. And did not crack the bobble. I think we're fully just on the Bowmaster plan here. So my opponent did show me subtlety, so I guess some portion of the time this does not actually resolve. Let's kill Dragon Rage Channeler, and my opponent might be punished for not immediately cracking their bobble to get the draw before I could put an Orcish Bowmasters into play. Unlicensed Hearse, sure. Um, that's going to be pretty good against me. Like, that shuts off a lot of my bullshit. So, probably the plan has changed, and I just play Burning Inquiry immediately here to just grow this Orc Army token. I may be supposed to make my land drop first. Bowmaster, Bowmaster, Bowmaster. This is up to a 4-4. Four, four. I guess I want to play one cookbook, but not both. I can just play this tapped. I hate that I don't have green sources to cast this card. Uh, we'll hit my opponent for 5. They're at 10. Um, lazy play from my opponent here. They did not tap unlicensed hearse to exile creatures from my graveyard. Sure. All right. Um, not worth discarding things directly into unlicensed hearse here. 
Am I just playing Season Pyromancer pre-combat? Seeing what happens, I think so. Good enough to get movement from my opponent. It eats a counter spell. For five mana, I can bring that back. I guess in case my opponent doesn't eat it randomly, I play my land drop. Feels a little weird. Okay. My opponent goes to five. My opponent can stabilize the board this turn with something like a Murktide Regent pretty easily. Sure. So at this point, I would say that the Unlicensed Hearse has outpaced my Orc token. My opponent can tap this to animate this, block, and then do the thing. Yeah, not having green mana to hardcast these things is brutal. Um, I guess I attempt the trade here, though. Just taking out my opponent's graveyard hate is super relevant. Oh, sure. I think I'm happy with this. All right. Opponent not growing the hearse here. They don't want me to return a fury to hand as of right now. Um, which I guess is reasonable. All right, there's a bobble. Uh, it looks like Merktide Regent is happening. Sure. All right. I don't have anything to punish here. My situation's not really great. Troll. If I cycle this, it gives my opponent an opportunity to eat this stuff, which I'm not like I would love that fury back. But I guess I'm not. Um, this feels pretty bad. Okay. I will return the fury to my hand. I don't have a red card to pitch to it, and I also don't have five mana. Like, the troll can get me the fifth mana, but not next turn. Oh, no. I am dead in two turns to that Merktide Regent. Uh, my opponent's at four, but I don't know that that matters. Like, I just don't think I can close out this game without getting lucky. Like, if my opponent has one counterspell, I think that's just it. So I can Fury pitch casting a Fury to deal damage to this. That doesn't do enough to get this through. Yeah, we're unfortunately dead. I can't cast two creatures for the purposes of Vengevine. Uh, yeah, uh, we just kind of stumbled through this one. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. Okay, so I can play an Underworld Cookbook on turn one. On turn two, I can play Cathartic Reunion and end up playing a Hollow One. Um, this is, in theory, fine. What percentage of card, black cards am I actually casting? Very few. It's mostly Bowmasters, so I can probably not take two damage here and just grab a basic mountain. All right, so there's Cookbook. We'll see what we're facing down here. I don't think I'm discarding anything to Cookbook at end of turn. Or, uh, let's just confirm. I have Basic Swamp. I have Basic Swamp in here. Oh, I'm so bad versus counter spells. Maybe I straight wraith cycle first to just see if I get a different line here. Not really. Okay. So we'll grab a swamp. I cast this, discarding one and two. So let's cast this and hope that my whole cathartic reunion thing resolves, because if I am down three cards for casting this, my opponent just spell pierces me, like, the game's over. Okay, so I have to play one more, right? Oh, no, I don't have to play another one. All right, Street Wraith plus two discard, yep. My hand just feels really awkward, though, like, I don't really have things to do with the Underworld cookbook. I don't have a red card for Fury. I don't have five mana for Fury. Maybe I need to be mulliganing more aggressively than I am? Sure. Alright, we might be playing against the same sort of thing again. Blue Red Lands could be a lot of things, though. Alright, Ledger Shredder. Um, I can potentially do some cute things with Bowmaster here. Alright, they looted away a land. 
And I will cast a Bowmasters in my upkeep in response to their trigger. I don't think I'm discarding anything to make a food. All right, upkeep, cast Bowmasters, ping you. That's my first spell this turn. They draw their card, ping you. Feels nice. So, how do I want to do this? I think I'm fine with just pitch casting Fury to kill Ledger Shredder and then doing Fire Breathing here. I think I'm good with that. Although, honestly, I'd be good with trading this body for Ledger Shredder too, right? Yes. All right. Send them. All right. No blocks from my opponent. So given that, I will just shock and fire breathe here, meaning I hit my opponent for 7. They are at 10, facing lethal damage. I am just going to fury their Ledger Shredder out of the way, I think. I don't think I want to wait a turn to let them untap with that thing. And if they connive, I Bowmaster ping anyway. So, you know. I think one looting for one direct damage and an additional counter on this token is worth it. All right. Bowmaster ping you. They're at six. Fury nukes Ledger Shredder. And we've got a lot of onboard damage here. No fun graveyard-based tricks, though. Okay, that's fine. Following it up with a Marktide region is scary, though. Uh, which is what's happening, unfortunately. Don't have the ability to easily get that out of the way. Um, This is hopefully good, though. Burning Inquiry with uh, Orcish Bowmasters in play is a bit of a combo. So let's send some damage to the dome and grow this token. Did we discard anything good? Not really. Opponents at 6 when that stack clears. That means that this is a lethal attack, meaning that I can swing in with all of my creatures, because this one has to be blocked or my opponent dies. Which is a real feel-bad moment. Fire breathe. Opponent goes to 2. Uh, I'm probably going to end up returning a creature with this, so let's play that tapped. This is a this ended up being a pretty powerful hand. I imagine we're good from here one way or another. Uh, sure. Oh, it's unholy heats have been very good here. They kept whatever card it was. Sure. I can trade Blazing Rootwalla for this. Can't cast that right now. I'm kind of figuring out what I'm doing with this. I can also just, like, force this to attack on my opponent's turn and not attack this turn. That's reasonable. I could also cycle this for another look at something, but a 5-mana 4-4 four four is pretty reasonable. I just get back a Fury. I can do this at instant speed, right? Yeah. I think I just wait a turn. I get kind of punished by Marktide Regent for doing that. Because Marktide Regent can shrink this, um, just clarifying by reducing the, like, delirium count. Not this time, though. I want that 10. Sure. Reasonable chump blocker. I am going to return a Fury to my hand. That's a card that results in a kill a lot of the time. Well, show me your removal spell, I guess. Burning Inquiry and Fury are both lethal in different ways. I think I just cast Burning Inquiry. It has a chance of giving me Venge Vines and such as well. If this gets countered, I can also just cycle Hollow One into a red card for lethal, which I think I'm fine with. Let's see? Uh, yep. Let us attempt lethal. Three damage, one damage. Exactly two incoming damage, not counting fire breathing. Last card was not a lightning bolt effect, so we take game one here. And now I'm asking the same question as last round, where I still don't have a lot of experience with this deck. I just haven't seen it pop off yet, so I'm hesitant to remove pieces or ley lines. I think ley lines are reasonable, but I just don't know what I cut. I think I'm just going to keep running it back. 
Cathartic Reunion seems scary versus count like actual factual counterspell, but it also feels like that enables some of my more broken things I'm doing, so you know, there's that. But this hand doesn't do anything. Like this hand has a reasonable mix of lands and spells, but has no plan to actually win the game. I can't put a hollow one into play. I can't really answer a creature without great cost. Um, this one goes back. Uh, that doesn't do anything either. I'll go to five. Okay. Uh, so what am I doing? I am cycling Street Wraith so that I can play Osmore. Uh, this is going to be a keep. If Osmore resolves and I get the Underworld Cookbook, I can try to do something cool with this. I want to do something cool with this. I keep this, but Bowmasters is Bowmasters. I think given that this hand is weak, if I win, it's by doing something broken with this. So let's try to believe. Shock from the opponent. The modern tax. Sure. Wow, getting rid of a lightning bolt. Seems like a reasonable card in this matchup to me, but again, I have very few reps. They also might just be trying to turbo grow this. All right, cycle. Eh, let's pick up a red source. I can cast as more. Grabbing an underworld cookbook, calling it a turn. And we're going to need to set up for the future. It's not like it's just going to be free to do this. Um, we could do things as early as next turn. I think it's probably going to take two turns. All right, so that's three card types in Graveyard now. There's the second land. All right, no attack. Ooh. The next turn I just double cast Root Wallas and we're just good to go. That is, in theory, fine by me. Hope this doesn't get spell pierced because it makes my life awkward if it does. Cool. Bash in for three. All right. We're, we're on track to do something this game. We'll see, though. Like, my opponent can do powerful things like cast Murktide Regent this turn, or can just have a couple of removal spells that they chain off on my creatures, and my board actually ends up not being all that impressive. Honestly, it's also possible that it was just better for me to play Bra Blazing Root Wall of this turn, Underworld Cookbook, another one in at my opponent's end step, and just attack for nine next turn. But I think the surprise of this matters a lot. Sure. That's top top with that. I think the Dragon Ridge Channeler isn't getting maximum value, but it does have to attack now, which is hopefully a benefit for me. Um, again, definitely a little scared of Murktide Regent, uh, which my opponent does not have. Great. So, discard this. We also might end up activating this ability to... Uh, Nuke the Dragon Rage Channeler, depending on how the next turn cycle goes. Grab a tapped land. Okay, sure. My opponent gets to know what I draw here. A Street Wraith. I am probably just cycling that. Think that's still worth the two life. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's discard a Root Walla. The second card that I've discarded this turn. My opponent wants to remove Asmore. This is the opportunity before I have two food tokens, 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 and can pivot into kind of a control role. Okay, and there it is. Goodbye. That's creature one. Discarded two things, right? Meaning that this is one mana. So it's going to be one mana, one mana, and fire breathing. Or no, I guess I don't uh, fire breathing attack this turn. Um, I guess I can play this out, though. So we'll cast this for one mana. Return my plant friend. We can go ahead and go to combat and crash in for the four. Bringing my opponent to ten. I'm just going to play this out in an attempt of going wide of my opponent's blockers. And then next turn can do some combination of fire breathing and eating food tokens as seems appropriate. Um, again, Merktide Regent specifically stabilizing the board is a little rough, but this has to attack. 
And if my opponent blocks a 4-4, I still just have 10 damage in play, so it need to be like Murktide Regent plus something else. Uh-oh, this is not a good sign for my opponent. Um, unless they've got something crazy, like a Fury or something. It feels like they're dead for making this play. Now, they might not have had any other plays. Just a Flooded Strand in Exile. Yeah, that has to attack. Four card types in Graveyard there. Yeah, okay. Um, was this a 3-3 at the beginning of the turn? I wonder if they could have just gone to second main phase, kept this back as a blocker, and had greater chances of being alive. I think this was small, beginning of the turn. And if that's the case, they might have had a few more outs. I wonder if I've been evaluating this deck wrong, and this is really just an Orcish Bowmasters deck that has to have a bunch of other cards in it to, uh, fill out these 75. It's like, Bowmasters into these two things is kind of gross, assuming it works. I don't even know that I'm going to play a cookbook on turn one. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. Sure. Okay. Now my hand does nothing. What did my opponent pitch? They pitched Bowmasters. Sure. I lost Fury. And my opponent's going to play something that keeps this alive. Actual, factual, undying evil. And then I assume that I lose Orcish Bowmasters as the second card. I am correct. Just gonna go ahead and fetch. So my hand does a load of hot nothing. And I've got to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Cathartic reunion, maybe, this turn. Red. Probably red. So we'll discard. I think keeping the burning inquiry. Because if I get my own bowmasters, like that's hot. It's a hollow one. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not enough mana. All right, it's okay. We can discard that to our Burning Inquiry next turn. If I don't discard that to my Burning Inquiry, cool. Basic Swamp into Healthy Voidwalker. Rough. Um, I'm in trouble, folks. I'm also going to, like, discard a bunch of really neat stuff directly into the Exile Zone. I'm already under 7 damage a turn, so what's 2 life among friends? Multiple hollow ones. Well, currently cost 3 mana. Let's see if I can keep at least one of these. I kept one. Uh, I put a fucking Fury in exile. God damn it. I thought I can cast Fury, get rid of hollow one, bash me for 4. I think this one's over. Graveyard's off as well. Life's bad. I don't know, maybe my opponent will just turn Douthy Voidwalker sideways in, in an attempt to kill me, and um, I magically find a way to win, which I currently can't think of. I have 10 damage next turn. 10's easy. But I can't hard cast Vengevine in this deck list. So I can't get extra haste damage that way, and the graveyard's off. I don't know, maybe I... Burning Inquiry into some weird Bowmaster line. That might have required me to not play Blazing Root Walla, though. I don't. Okay. So I could block this with two creatures. Lose a hollow one. This might just be setting me up for another unearth... Or not unearth, uh... Undying shenanigan situation. I guess I'm not winning through combat normally, so... Alright. I'll bite. Undying thing? Alright, yeah, it's not dead after all, which is the same general thing. But my life total doesn't go down as much, but... My opponent has the same amount of power, and now... They also have a little bit of reach with the wicked roll. I'll take my draw step, but I can't think of any outs here. Yeah, and... As an additional cost to cast this, I do have to discard two cards, so we're we're done here. Um, this matchup feels like I have to lay line. Um, given that my opponent has Dalthy Voidwalkers, I think boarding out the Venge Vines is reasonable. And we try to play this as like a Hollow One Orcish Bowmasters deck for this game. So if I keep this hand. I can ley line to stop my opponent from doing nasty things to me, but I don't really do anything myself. 
So by normal legacy heuristics, if my hand doesn't actually do anything, I should just ship it. And so I am going to do that. Fuck. Am I keeping... Am I keeping this? Am I keeping get to five mana, start hardcasting furies, dot plan? Okay. It's, uh... It is not quite what I was hoping for. Uh... Yeah. This is the classic, like, keep hand based on the strength of a hate card, but... The hand doesn't really have a plan, but I don't know that I want to go to five. Like, I think a six with lands and spells and a ley line is hopefully reasonable. And I've just got to kind of believe in the top of the deck here. Sure. Second land drop. I have to keep in mind that Orcish Bowmasters could now be available. It'd be real bad with all those red draw spells that I have in my deck. Uh, but we didn't find one here, so we're passing the turn. Man, if a Bowmasters hits play, I just, like, don't remove it, do I? Like, I have my own Bowmasters to answer it, but no other removal. No, I, I all right, uh, that's not fair. I have the Furies. They're just not a curve-efficient way to do that unless I'm pitch-casting them. And I really want to hard-cast these Furies, if at all possible. Now, the upside here is that Bowmasters is, like, not that bad of a clock. I am going to take some tapped lands out of the deck here. If I don't fetch, I can marginally increase my chance of drawing the fifth land drop. I think I'd rather just get this out of the way, though. All right. So, I could cycle Hollow One and then play Osmore getting an Underworld Cookbook. And that's like, okay. I think I'll do it. Second Bowmasters is a little rough. I may actually change my plan for this turn. They get pinged two here. I was, like, I was fine with getting pinged one. The second one is pretty rough. I was wanting to just clear all this nonsense with a fury. Like, do I now have to pitch cast a fury? I don't think so. I think I can still just hard cast these. So, yes. Pick up a cookbook. Swamp. Play a cookbook. Call it a turn. I probably take six on my opponent's turn. And then, assuming I don't get like griefed or something, I take out the orc token with the first fury and both bowmasters with the second one. Oh, wow. Mount Doom. Cool. That's fine. Not activating cookbook as of right now. Take the six. Go to seven. Are we dodging a thought seize effect? We are dodging a thought seize effect. That's great. Uh, we're not super interested in playing Burning Inquiry right now. Grab the swamp. Play the Fury to take out the large orc token. And Fury, in theory, holds the ground versus the orcish bowmasters. It's somewhat likely that my opponent has removal. So it's no guarantee. Burning Inquiry may end up becoming food. It's just hard for me to eat the food in terms of a clock here. Fable? Don't mind that, honestly. Because that's just one, two, three, four for the second fury. All right. Is Burning Inquiry a food? I'm going to say no. Okay. Here we go. On it conveniently is tapped out, so none of this stuff is just immediately coming back. This is 6 damage. With 12 damage on board, another 3 damage here. Um, my opponent could die next turn. Um, despite this one being a little bit of a clunker at the beginning, it's come together nicely. Now, opponent has admittedly missed some land drops here, uh, which has certainly helped me out. Hit it, Sugu consumes all. That's really good to know about. All right. Opponent's got four mana to work with. They can, in theory, answer both of these creatures. End of turn. We're going to produce another body. All right, and that's good enough for my opponent. Well, that plan worked. All right. We have no mana here. Easy mulligan. Uh, this is a solid hand. Osmore, the thing that's going away. 
Osmore is probably the thing that goes away. I could see it being a hollow one, but someday we will li live the uh, hollow one burning inquiry dream. I just don't know that it'll be today. No life there. Understood. So, am I feeling lucky? Like, do I just want to fire off burning inquiry on turn one before my opponent has a chance to play their orcish bowmasters and attempt to put a 4-4 into play on turn one? I think so. I believe. I believe in you, Hollow One. Okay. I don't know if this is the same one or a different one, but, like, we did the thing. Ooh, we took out an Orcish Bowmasters, too. Decision rewarded. All right, we've got our 4-4 in play on turn one. I've taken out my opponent's graveyard. We'll see where this goes. My opponent might just, like, terminate the Hollow One, and we'll move on with our merry lives. All right. That this becomes my land for turn. Send them. Opponents at 14. We'll pass turn. I've got Bowmasters available for my opponent's end step. Or for if they just go and play their own Bowmasters. Which they do. You have my permission to ping me. Uh, am I just playing Bowmasters right back? Plays into Hidetsu consumes all if I do. I would just do it in combat any anyway. And that same thing would happen. I think I'm fine with that. Bowmasters, your Bowmasters. Now I'm kind of fully reliant on what is currently in play here. Like this, this is just what I've got. I have no gas left in the tank. I have some gas left in the tank. Let's crash in. I would trade Orc for Orc. I wouldn't trade Bowmasters for Orc. Hoping to get my opponent to use some mana here to make my Season Pyromancer play a little bit safer. We bolting? Yeah, we're bolting. That's fine. Like, this is still a favorable trade for me and means that this doesn't just eat a Bowmaster trigger in a negative way. So, land drop. Play Season Pyromancer. Note that this makes um, the elementals for non-land cards you discard. So, no, no gas here. I still do just have four power in play. Like, I can just turn these dudes sideways and uh, hope it works out. I can play Underworld Cookbook, hoping to get back an Orcish Bowmasters, probably. Note that once you're Hellbent, this is uh, sick, and it's just a three mana 2-2 two -two that draws two cards. Uh, we're interested in doing this post-combat. Again, we want my opponent to be out of range of doing something like Orcish Bowmasters before I do this. And I'm not endangering this in combat. Terminate. Yes, this is fine. All right, my opponent's at 12. Uh, I think there's a lot of cards better than land. I think there's a lot of cards better than Underworld Cookbook. I think I just play this now. So we've played around Bowmasters. There's three more triggers here. One, two, three. That puts my opponent to nine. Got Seasoned Pyromancer that can come back at 5 mana. Uh, let's cycle this. Yuri. Uh, playing this out specifically means that I lose two things to hit it so it consumes all. But if my opponent doesn't have exactly that, I think I want this body in play. Hit it so it consumes all would be really good though, because it would eat these and then take out the Seasoned Pyromancer with the second mode before I could bring the tokens back. Yuri. Pitching Fable. The Orc have to go? Where are we at here? No, it's taking out the small creatures. Alright, it goes to exile. We're now looking for lands for Fury and Season Pyromancer. But we got lizards. So that counts for something. Sure. Not unexpected. Play Lizard. Alright, there's the third land drop. Southy Voidwalker. That could end up being pretty good against me. But it has shadow, so it doesn't block this lizard. Or this lizard, for that matter. Get in there, bud. Fire breathing. Opponents at six. Facing down lethal lizards. Another Fury will be very good against this play. Fury and Hidetsu consumes all both quite strong right now. Alright, there's a Take Numa. We got like a shouldred? What are we doing? Grief? Grief. 
Sure. That's really damn good. That gets a void counter. Oh shit. Am I gonna get to attack with the okay now there it is. Now this is now a bit of a disaster. Guess I could have like played around this happening by pitch casting fury, blazing Ruwala, killing Douthy Voidwalker. Die in two turns to this, that's pretty rough. Might lose this one. So this is nine damage. Putting me to eight. Uh, that enters tapped. I take nine damage. I can't get these tokens. I can't play this. Uh, yeah, I am dead. Yeah, I, I wonder if I needed to play around exactly land plus grief plus Douthy sacrifice on Fury. That wasn't something I was thinking about at the time. A lot has happened before I've hit the record button here. My opponent mulliganed and then pitched a Vengevine to Gemstone Cavern. So it looks like we're playing maybe some sort of pseudo mirror here. I'm going to play the Underworld Cookbook on turn one. We'll use that to discard a Vengevine. And then on my next turn, I can get two creatures and kind of do the thing. Targeting yourself? <laughs> well, that's fucking cool. All right. That's wild. Uh, um, I don't know that I want to cast Burning Inquiry. Maybe, maybe I wait on that. Things could get a little weird here. All right. Let's discard a Rootwalla. Or the whole madness thing. Make a food token. Cast this for one mana. Returning Vengevine. I will search for an Underworld Cookbook. I'll play Cliffs. I probably just want to put in another Root Walla at the end of my opponent's turn, right? And then just crash in for a shit ton of damage. That sounds good. Alright. Vengevine crashes in for four. It's turn two. I effectively have four, seven, ten, thirteen damage next turn. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna make a lizard. This is so much damage. Okay. Um, so we're playing against, like, bug pseudo dredge. We're playing ley lines, basically. <clears throat> it's also probably not crazy to, like, can we, okay. It's probably also not crazy to consider Blood Moon, but... I haven't seen a lot of what my opponent's deck looks like yet. I've only seen 10 cards. So what are the cuts? Maybe some of my slower stuff goes here. Like I cut pyros and trolls for these four. Keep the stuff that lets me go turbo. Keep the whole bowmasters plus these. Despite the fact that it's slightly awkward to uh, do the do the thing on my opponent, so to speak. Uh, keep? This probably does some wild stuff. All right. Opponent has a creature. So let's cycle one of these. And I think I just play this turn one. Uh, I can do that off this land. And then this 3-3 successfully blocks the grave crawler. I don't think I need to cycle the second one of these yet, because I might just end up discarding that. What are we doing? Ledger Shredder. Got it. All right. Leyline is late to the party, but maybe not fatally so. I'll probably Bowmaster this. If I attack, would my opponent double block? They might. Yeah, they might. I don't know any, like, what sort of cards I'm going to need to play around. Oh, right, this can't block, JK. All right, opponent's at 17. I'm holding up Bowmasters. Sure. Um, that's fine. Carrion Feeder. Don't love that. Ooh, prized Amalgam. Oh, I forgot to fucking play my Bowmasters. That was embarrassing. Yeah, I just gave up a shit ton of value. That was so bad. Well, uh, and I punted again while talking about my mistake. All right. I have punted this game, just 
absolutely fully. Target carrion feeder. Oh, and it'll sack grave crawler to it to keep it alive. I'll take some damage, and I've got to see if I can salvage this game after some very bad mistakes on my end. Start by cycling this. Didn't really get me to where I want to be. I think I'm playing one of these tapped and then passing the turn. Uh, maybe I attack. I don't know. There's this. Yeah, maybe I'm holding back here. Um, yeah, but I, I played that turn like shit. Yep. This triggers prized amalgam. Alright, so that's my opponent's first spell. This is their second spell. I'll play Bowmasters. Let's just target my opponent's face here. Brings them to 15. Get two more triggers here. Be sending these at face. 13. This is now a 4-4. Four, four. Second connive. Just continue to shoot the dome here. Opponent's at 11. The idea is to end up having the bigger creature. Oh, Venge Vines. Fuck. Oh no, they only ultimately cast one creature? Okay, they do get these. Sure. My hand just doesn't really do anything. I'm close. I need like a Fury. I would need like Fury and Red card. Could play a Ley Line. Can I just survive next turn if I attack? If my opponent doesn't block, they take six here. Count the Ledger Shredders as one bigger than they are. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15-ish damage incoming. I have some blockers. Yeah, so I think I'm into this. Wait, only one prized amalgam came back? Question mark. All right, my opponent blocks and sacks. Um, just confirm I have second swamp. I do have second swamp. So let's fetch that and play this. And the hope is keeping those Venge Vines out of play. Fuck. All right, that's a good play from the opponent. So that gives them one guaranteed creature. Okay, they're just going to return it this turn. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We were trying to avoid this. So the connive happens. Oh, my opponent has one Ledger Shredder now. I guess we're just sending these upstairs. I haven't done the math. I think I'm dead. All right. So I have to block one of these. Uh, what's it like if I do this? So this is, what, seven incoming damage? I do this. Or sorry, this is flyer. This is four, eight, 11, 14. Whereas this is four, 10. Sure, so this is fine. And I'm going to need to find like a fury or something that gets prized amalgam out of the way. Okay. Blood gas can't block. That's fine. Edron Crab, sure. Yeah, I think I, I think I win this one if I play better. Oh, there's the Fury. Oh, damn, the Hedron Crab just has just enough toughness, though, right? So I... Yeah, the Hedron Crab did it. Damn it. Um, How can I win? Fury, red card, red card? Would do it? I'm a mana short of, like... Underworld Cookbook, return something, play it. All right. Let's try to find a line. So we do this. I discard these two lands. Did you just sacrifice? I guess it's whatever is in exile. Osmore? That doesn't quite get me anywhere. Can't force my opponent to draw cards here with Bowmasters, which would have been a way to potentially do it. Yeah, I just played this game like crap and am dead as a result. Yeah, this one was totally winnable, and it's just my fault. I think I'm pretty happy with what I've sideboarded out. I don't think I have room for Blood Moons. Tempting as it is. Okay. So this hand has the possibility, the possibility of doing some insane turn one stuff. Is this fine? I hate the variance associated with trying these burning inquiry lines. I hate it with a passion. But any time where I don't discard hollow one is just nuts. Um, I am just going to cast this. 
it make, puts me a little bit further away from Vengevine, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Ooh, um, we might have decreased my opponent's ability to play the start of this game. Underworld Cookbook. Interesting. I don't know that it's good, though. Let's shock. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. Get rid of... I think I'm going to get rid of the Burning Inquiry. Get rid of... Nah, maybe I don't. I don't know. Maybe I do. I'm, on, I'm unsure about the next play here. I'm going to try this. Okay. We're up some cards. I haven't necessarily improved my situation. Um, here's to hoping Vengevine does some cool stuff. There's Ledger Shredder. Oh, this is stressful. <laughs> Let's Cathartic Reunion. Let's pitch a... I'm going to pitch these Burning Inquiries. I'm kind of scared of using them right now. Eh. It is worth two life for me to look at another card here. It is worth two life for me to look at another card here. Fucking cookbooks are not what I'm looking for. All right, bash in for four. I don't think I let my opponent connive here. Yeah, we were we were looking for some creatures. We were looking for a bowmaster. Uh, we just kind of whiffed on a lot of things there. Is this? The fuck does this card do? This is too many words. Drink a card. Oh. That kind of just ancestral. That's kind of fucked up. Alright, so my hollow one doesn't get to attack anymore. That's pretty bad. Uh, we'll fetch a land end of turn. There's a root walla. That is a creature for the purpose of Vengevine. I think I am playing a cookbook this turn and passing, unfortunately. And then I will be hoping to draw another creature to return my Vengevine. Yeah. Oh, that's Exile. Sure. Scary? I think I have to save this. I don't think I can do something with Cookbook here. Sure can't cast this card. Um, I probably need to get a land before all my lands are randomly gone. I don't think I play the second cookbook. Um, do I have a return creature line with Underworld Cookbook? No, right? Because I have to discard a card. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, we're passing here. How do I see what X is? X is 5. I mill 15. I maybe don't fetch. I might be about to be dead. Target player mills 8. Okay. You connive. I mill 8 more. And I just get milled out. Uh, that's unfortunate. It's just like barely didn't line up well. But they just have lethal on my opponent on their turn. So they just had me by a single turn cycle here. GG's. So my opening hand could play a Cathartic Reunion on turn two to cycle these cards, but I think that's worse than just mulliganing. All right, turn one, cookbook, discard, Vengevine. Where am I going from there with this? This is what I'm talking about, about Street Wraith, making mulligans hard. Like, I don't have a red card to go with Fury. I don't have a first creature to cast, let alone a second creature. Do I just have to keep this in believe? It doesn't feel good. I'm gonna go to five. I I just don't feel like this one works out most of the time. All right. Cycle Street Wraith on turn one. Play Osmore. I don't have an easy way to discard this, although I guess Osmore can get Cauldron. Uh, hands of Keep. Season Pyromancer always goes back, and then I'm getting rid of one of these two cards, and it's just like. Do I think I can play two creatures in one turn on five? The answer is probably no. I probably keep Bowmasters and just try to play good, clean magic. Um, let's fetch and shock first, I think. Blood Crypt. Cycle. Uh, this stack back up. All right. So we have Osmore into Orcish Bowmasters with an Underworld Cookbook to help a little bit later on. Um... I'm down two cards, and I'm at 15 life already. This is, like, not good for me. Uh, sure. Some sort of Death and Taxes style deck. Uh, hopefully Bowmasters gets to kill Athalia or something on their turn. 
Fingers crossed. File goes up. One toughness creature, please. Thank you. So we'll Bowmaster's end of turn and kill the Thalia. And then I hopefully have clear attacks in for five points of damage. Um, Giver Runes is a thing that could exist. Um, but I fully believe that I am on deal points of damage to my opponent as quickly as possible before their higher card quality and card advantage starts coming online. I am going to hold back the Bowmasters, though, like it is a reasonable removal card. Um, I'm going to fetch and play around some Aven Mind Sensor bullshit. I don't know if I have to or not, um, but I am going to. But like there's Leon and Relic, Warder, Aven Mind Sensor as reasonable cards that my opponent could be playing. Uh, that was their draw for turn. They would have put it in off of Vile otherwise. Um, is this going to face right now? So I can attack with an Orc Army token? I think so. Sure. Oh. Okay. Sure. Was not expecting that. So I'm going to turn this swamp into a food. That way I have the option of doing Osmore nonsense. Uh, cycle? I'll cycle to see what this is. I think that's worth two life. Ah, uh, that is an above average draw. So Osmore can attack right now but won't be able to in future turns because of Giver. Yeah, not the happiest with it. So we'll have Giver of Runes nuke itself. <laughs> Fuck me, I guess. One is at nine. There's some hope for me. Um, Man, I wish Ephemerate was on my radar. If it was, I could have just played around it. I thought I was being safe by playing things early. Oh, I didn't really realize that card was modern legal. Sure. Blood Crypt. So protection is active. My life's bad. This can also protect from colorless, so it's not like just getting a hollow one back instantly solves all of my problems. I think I'm just going to play this as a tapped land. We're going to stare at each other for a little while. Uh, which unquestionably favors my opponent. Like, they've got Vigilant Creatures, they've got Protection, they have Flyers. Yep. So I guess I'm hoping to... God damn it. I guess I'm hoping to end up with some, like, Fury nonsense here. I think, I, I think I've just passed the point where I win, though. My opponent has multiple things that can protect each other. Fury doesn't actually kill any creatures anymore. My opponent has me clocked out in the air, has the ground stabilized. No, okay. I guess I've got an out with multiple Bowmasters. It's play cards that force my opponent to draw. That's how I can win this still. So end of turn. I guess I Underworld Cookbook and return Street Wraith. I don't respond to this. Because if I respond to this and return Street Wraith, ooh, that's pretty bad too. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that's going on over there is pretty good against what I'm doing. And other than the random Thalia my opponent played, these are big booty creatures. All right. So I'm dead next turn because my opponent just gives protection from black and can crash in. And if I have a red creature, they also just give protection from red. So we are going for Street Wraith or another look at something that will deal... Well, I guess it's Burning Inquiry specifically. Burning Inquiry is worth 8 damage, and then I have th 4 bodies to my opponent's 3 blockers. So I have an out. I get a draw for it. Fury? Fury doesn't do anything here. Cycle. That does not do anything. I am dead. GG's. I can only cast EE for two, unless I play Gemstone Caverns. I mean, EE for two is meaningful. EE for one might be meaningful sometimes, honestly. My opponent could be playing things like Rest in Peace. Put a damper on some of my Vengevine shenanigans. I think my opponent being just like Strict Proctor deck, generally speaking, 
is going to do bad things to me. I might do something... Oh man, there's only three EEs. I don't even need to sideboard that many. I'm going to board three EEs and then keep one of these. I don't know whether or not I need to play around search effects. I don't know how good troll is. Ugh. Uh, let's do this. This is probably not good enough for this matchup. Like if my opponent plays Strict Proctor, then this just gets shut off. I'm going to try to kill my opponent when I'm on the play here. I'm not succeeding. I'm not succeeding at all. I don't think I can keep this one lander. Let's go to five. Uh, yikes. Okay. How much do we believe in burning inquiry get lucky? I think the answer is I have to believe. I'm going to put these furies back in the deck to draw them later. I think. I think that's the plan. All right. Believe. 17 life. Burning inquiry. We did not successfully discard either copy of Blazing Rootwalla. F in chat. Uh, we did make my opponent discard two copies of Strict Proctor. So we've got that going for us. I'm going to believe in Burning Inquiry. Uh, yeah, let's cycle this. Maybe we hit a uh, hollowed one. Nope. Sure didn't. We'll cast both of those. I think I get my non-basic land out of the way because of Archon. I mean, this still does just attack for 6 damage. And I can play an EE on 2 to get rid of whatever my opponent plays on their turn. That's an annoying card. This is just a pseudo-graveyard hate card. Alright. Is it worth missing 2 points of damage to wait a turn on this? It honestly might not be. Like, that might be where we're at. That every individual point of damage matters because my situation is so dire. I don't know, a pseudo time walk on my opponent is reasonable. Or no, this is this needs to be two to crack. Uh JK. Sure. That's an annoying card for me. I would like to just close out this game. Uh this has no current text. We'll blow this up for two to take the Sanctifier out of the way and bash in for six points of damage. Ooh, we are getting the Giver, unless my opponent is just, like, ephemerating, uh, which is a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, it is an ephemerate. Sure. So they probably won't rebound that. Uh, another one. Yikes. Well, I have no valid plays. Uh, so my opponent's just sitting back. I don't really think that's a good thing for me, though. So I'll play this. I can use it to discard Vengevine and make some food. Uh, it may become impossible for me to return Vengevine, though. Like, my opponent can just go land Archon, and then Vengevine never comes back in a meaningful way. All right. We'll still work towards that line, though. There is a land. Even Mind Sensor is not currently live. Grab Swamp. Cast Fury. Fury attempts to nuke Giver. All right, yeah, my, you may take protection from another color. Protection from blue. Reasonable. All right, yeah, my opponent is just fully stuck. Needs a third land drop to function. Okay, that was our draw for turn. I believe it is worth throwing away. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's also unfortunate that my opponent has two of these and has cleared out some creatures from my graveyard. Um, anyway, I think I'm turning these sideways is what I'm getting at. So we will go ahead and grow one of these. I don't need to use mana on the other one. Does this keep working? Yeah, it does keep working, making my Underworld cookbook a lot worse. Uh, yep. I mean, at least my opponent didn't also have an Ephemerate. Um, but that's pretty brutal. It also goes to Exile. I can't get it back multiple reasons uh, we're passing the turn here and I don't have green mana sources in my deck so I can't return this and attempt to hard cast it to power through this yikes 
uh, yeah, we're chilling. We'll turn our next draw into something else with Cathartic Reunion. But this vial is now ticking up, and it's getting to the point where my opponent is either going to draw a land or have vial on three next turn to start deploying the other hate bears and make my life generally miserable. Uh, sure. That probably means, like, another one is coming. All right. Let's... Cathartic Reunion. Discarding these. I've got some bonus cards here. So Osmore's ability is what? Target creature deals 6 damage to itself. I can't target that to make it do the damage to itself. Unfortunate. So are we trying to go wide with Season Pyromancer? I think I'm just looking for other cards. What am I looking for? Bowmasters? Bowmasters into nonsense is what I'm looking for. Maybe I need to... Nah. Alright. Let's find other things. Okay. Uh, 10. Okay. That's worth something. We'll do that. Can play and crack an EE for two next turn. The Vengevine does get to come back. I get a new Underworld cookbook, uh, which is honestly just going to immediately become a food. So let's discard that. Now, Osmore's ability is live. Swing. If it's specifically not another protection creature, this is reasonable. It is specifically another protection creature. It's okay. I can take out two of them next turn. I guess Anointed Peacekeeper making EE cost more to activate would be weird. My opponent can deploy two three drops now. Okay, it is Anointed Peacekeeper. I don't know, they kind of need to name Asmore, right? Otherwise Asmore just nukes that thing. I guess Ephemerate's a card. Okay, they name EE. It's another one. So I should immediately blow up this first one. Target you. Sacrifice my two foods. And then I get to do a cool trick. So, this makes my spell cost two more to cast. I can cast my EE for X equals zero, and then it's like I paid the two normally, and then I can just crack it. I think I'm okay. We just go cast this. X is currently zero, but I've paid two different colors as far as the sunburst is concerned. There is still going to be activating it. It's two more, right? So this costs four. That's fine. I've got that. Go to 8. Get both Sanctifier and Vex out of the way. And I bash in for 10 and force a block here. While leaving myself with 7 power in play. God damn it. That's real good. Now my opponent can trade with Osmore. Take 4 and be in a pretty reasonable position. My Osmore goes to Graveyard. I can get it back with the Underworld Cookbook. Um, it's just like not the best. Okay. That's great for me. Um, hopefully I can just whack my opponent with Hollow One twice. Uh, Fury is also a, just a great draw. Alright, opponent's at two. I think I just play this, honestly. Like, if it dies in combat, I'll bring it back with Cookbook instead. We've got a 3-3 three, three, double, double Striker and a 4-4, four, four, both of which are lethal. Um, we do have to win another game, though. And honestly, I'm not sure that we would have won unless my opponent absolutely stumbled on their mana. Like, we nearly lost despite that. Minus Strict Proctor. Season Pyromancer seems like it might be good. Like, I might run out of gas in this matchup. But I'm not exactly sure what else I would cut. So, is Season Pyromancer better than Cathartic Reunion? I think Cathartic Reunion matters a lot. Or getting these things into the graveyard to do my aggressive aggro things. Is this hand fine? It has one land, which is a little iffy. But it has an EE. It has a way of getting things into Graveyard. It has a Bowmaster. It can be improved in a lot of different directions. I think we're going to say that this is fine. Sure. Another cookbook is not what I'm looking for. 
I think I'm going to cycle the Street Wraith to inform my decisions. Okay. Is EE e. going on one for Vile? Don't have the guaranteed land. I think EE e. is still going on one for Vile. Because so I can handle the creatures themselves relatively well with Fury. And I'm just banking on drawing land, troll, burning inquiry. Ugh. That card's a pain in the ass. Uh, whiff. So on, on three draw steps, we missed on lands, uh, which might just mean I'm dead. I can't play any of my cards here. Oh, and there's a giver. And there's a giver. My opponent, anointed peacekeepers, my EE. I'm very far behind. Honestly, if my opponent puts in a two drop, uh, yeah, we can pretty much pack this one up. I take two here, go to 13, I hit a land. Can I salvage this? Graveyard's significantly worse due to Sanctifier, Fury's worse due to Giver, EE's worse because I don't have more mana, and they've got a pro-red creature. No, I, I think we're just dead. I think we missed on a pretty reasonable like I've got 17 hits plus three street wraiths 20 hits counting burning inquiry 24 counting troll 26 yeah we we missed on 26 outs three draws I don't feel bad about that so at the end of this league I can confidently say that this deck is not for me I don't feel like this deck is powerful and explicitly what i mean by that is i don't think that this deck consistently executes something that is attempting to win the game without a bunch of stuff going right and in a format where like grief and pseudo reanimate grief is one of the most popular things i feel like holes can just be punched in this very easily. And I feel like a lot of the cards just don't work together. Like, the best card in the deck was probably Orcish Bowmasters because pairing that with Burning Inquiry was surprisingly strong when it worked out. But when so many other decks are just playing Orcish Bowmasters, like, you have a must-answer card normally that you are trying to lean into further. I hate opening hands where you have to burning inquiry and just hope to produce a hollow one or hope that your venge vines go to the graveyard. Like, that feels really awkward to me. Um, I feel like if you played this deck for a very long time, you could get to a reasonable win rate with it once you understand all the moving pieces correctly. But is it worth that time to get to that point with this deck list, or should you just be playing something that is objectively stronger? where the individual cards are better in the late game. So I, I know that I made play mistakes, and I think we, we have a 2-3 finish most of the time in this league, but I just absolutely had a brain fart with the Ledger Shredder on the stack, and then I made it worse by talking about my problem instead of just making my play. So, but I don't feel like this is one of the better things that I could be doing in modern. I definitely feel that power level gap. And the fact that some of these cards are just situationally unplayable, either because you don't have mana for them or like you physically have to have extra cards that you're willing to discard, puts this in a lot, this deck into some very awkward places. And it's already in awkward territory as a Street Wraith deck because you can't see what some of the things in your opening hands are. Uh, in terms of suggestions, I think Troll's pretty bad. Like, you can cycle this to turn on Osmore or reduce the cost of Hollow One, and, like, that's fine. But without the ability to bring it back from the graveyard, I'm not super a fan of this, especially since a lot of times you end up discarding your land to something like Underworld Cookbook. So I'd want to maybe cut troll for something else um i could have maybe aborted gemstone caverns more aggressively to try to become faster i felt like that was something i was specifically supposed to do versus other like a, an all-in combo deck one chalice of the void feels pretty weird to me i get that this is a shardless agent cascade into rhinos format though so like 
I get it. And you view that as like the fourth EE that just kind of works differently. Um, but yeah, this one's not for me. The gameplay was intricate and interesting, but I don't think the deck is powerful enough that it's worth pursuing. Um, so Caden, I hope that was useful food for thought. Um, everybody else, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And if you need paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. All right, have a great rest of the day. See ya.